What's up guys? My name is Donnie Watson. You guys can call me Wendy though. It's our first video on the channel. Congrats, you made it. Congrats, I made the video. You know how long I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. But anyways, let's get started. You might not know yet, but this channel is all about photography and videography and traveling and those three things mixed together and intertwined in like spaghetti that you left over overnight and you tried to put it in the microwave but one side's cold so you have to flip it over and then you put it in the microwave and then it starts sparking and shit because you put the cheese in there now the cheese is all bubbling you should put the cheese on after let the heat from the spaghetti melt the cheese naturally and then you add the parmesan on top that's how you do it anyways it's gonna be about photography videography and traveling i'm gonna take you on you know some trips with me we're going to thailand soon and we're probably gonna go to Bali and Portugal and we have all these things planned for us. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna do, we're gonna do our own thing here. You know, it's gonna be fun, but it's also gonna be educational, informative, you know, non-biased. It's gonna be pretty biased, honestly. I'm gonna be like, I fucking hate Nikon. Only old people that shoot sports photography use Nikon. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so, let's get started with today's video, cue intro. All right guys, so today's video is on film photography. I'm pretty much going to break down my first time shooting film photography. Um, it was honestly one of the best experiences of my life being a digital photographer for the past few years and finally shooting film because I've collected film cameras since like middle school but most of the time the cameras were either out of operation they didn't work or if they did work there were minor bugs wrong with them or if they completely worked and they were fine I just sucked at loading film and, s and then even if I got past that part, shot a whole roll, I took it out and exposed it and forgot to roll it back in or like I did so much shit with film that I just like I gave up because I was like I spent too much money trying to like take one roll and get it developed and every time they're like yeah you exposed this um you know we can't develop this for you because it's already exposed you know yeah I, I used to hate film. I loved it, like mentally, I was like, oh yeah, film, film never dies, film forever, but then I just never shot it because I'm like, god, this shit is hard, <laughs> but once you actually kind of learn, it's pretty easy, so went on YouTube, brushed up on some skills, shout out to the boy Willem Verbeck, I think that's how it's William V, whatever his name is, Willem, 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 I watched like all your videos, bro, um, shout out to him for teaching us how to shoot 35, teaching us how to load film and just making it where it's like, it's not as intimidating, you know? And so I actually kind of worked my way up in like a day, like, I'll, I'll tell you the story. By the way, I'm shooting on the 77D, um, with a, it's this Chinese brand, it's called like Bayo or something. Um, oh, it's called, oh uh, shit, I'm gonna fall, hold on. Okay. So yeah, it's actually this bad boy right here, the Boya Universal Cardio Microphone. It's kind of like a Rode Video Mic Pro Mini or whatever, but it's a Chinese brand here and it's relatively cheap. So I was like, I'm gonna try it out, you know? I've, I've never really did too much with my sound, but let's try it out. Hopefully it doesn't sound too shabby. So that's what I'm using, and I hope I didn't mess up my focus, but let's see. All good? Yeah, shooting on the 77D, Canon EOS 77D, um, with the Sigma 18 to 35, I think. Sorry, yeah, yeah. 18 to 35 millimeter F 1.8. I lied, I lied again. Nope, I'm right. The Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 art lens, type two, I think. That, that's the setup. And I got this nice little ring light here for some lighting, just because 
you know, it's black people, we need our light, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, let's stop. Anyways, let's get into the video. Today we're going to talk about my first time shooting film photography. Let me go into the story. <sighs> A snowy winter day set in the deep city of Tokyo, Japan. hi -yo! Donnie and Sally, also known as Zhou Zha Hui, were walking down the street and they found the discount store. They went to the discount store, items of all kinds. It was almost heaven, but there was one thing that was too good, too good to be true. It was a Fujifilm disposable camera. <gasps> And so, I said, I'm going to buy this Fujifilm disposable camera. And yeah, so pretty much we're walking down the street in Hokkaido, Sapporo. And I went to one of these discount stores and they had just this huge bin full of the Kodak disposable, uh, sorry, the Fujifilm. They had Fujifilm and Kodak, I got Fuji, um, disposable cameras for like, I don't know. It was, it was relatively cheap, but it was in Japan currency, so I can't remember because... I'm an American that lives in China that visits Japan, so my I converted the money from Japan currency into Chinese currency, and then now I'm trying to explain it to you guys in American currency, so I'm guessing it was probably like $2 or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, I got this really cheap Fujifilm disposable camera. And uh, shoot all these photos from this camera in a day, and they're going to dispose tomorrow because the place that we got it from said that they did the same day developing in like an hour and we were like, what, you know? And so I was like, okay, cool. Shot a bunch of photos in one day, got them developed and they turned out trash. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Some of them were good, but most of them were trash. I have most of them here. I'll show you guys some. Some of them were just garbage. So like, <laughs> I like this one because of the, the kind of mood it puts you in. It has this kind of like eerie green kind of just bathroom selfie mood. Yeah, this one's actually one of my favorite ones. Um, and then this was one of me just trying to take a picture of our luggage. But so underexposed, like it's just all grainy and green. Um, this photo, amazing. Literally nothing. This photo, literally nothing. I got some good photos though because I remember... Because I got these good photos, I was like, oh, dang, I'm going to actually shoot some more film while we're here. And so I think some of the good ones I got were uh, over here. I don't know. <laughs> Babe, when do we buy our camera? What? I don't know which photos are from which camera. Uh, I know. You know? Do you want to take home? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have Jahwe help us. Yeah, so let's go through the photos and she's going to help us figure out which ones came from the disposable camera and then which ones came from our other camera, which we'll talk about in a bit. So this one. First one we got the disposable. disposable. The one that you could throw away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disposable. Okay. So this one right here of the homie Izzy and all the other homies. So here's another one from the disposable collection. This one from the disposable. Disposably. Disposable. Oh, this one's one of my favorites. This one's the disposable one. It's a security guard that's like guarding the bikes. He's like, no one's taking a bike. Not even you, sir. No bike for you today. Same day? Same day, a skating, you know, squad default. Another default one. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Disney World? No. Disneyland? No. Disney Sea! <laughs> have you ever been to Disney Sea? How many people can say they've been to Disney Sea? We have. And guess what? Guess what? There was no water. <laughs> uh, Half of the rides were closed. It closed at like 5 p.m. <laughs> and they didn't tell us. <laughs> And we could have went to Disney World, but we didn't buy the dual combo pass. We only bought the one pass. But it's okay. We had fun. We had fun. We, we waited in line for a long time, and we rode Hollywood Tower of Terror in Japan. Hollywood 
in Japan. It's okay. It was fun though. I enjoyed it. Disney see everyone. I recommend it. Honestly, I recommend it if you go on a normal day when things are open. So yeah, this one was there. More Disney. <laughs> Disposable. When they uh, closing. Okay, so these are the disposables. So here's a disposable. Here's one. These are the great images. I realize this thing's not this disposable Fujifilm that we got for like four bucks. It's not the Sony A7S Mark II. It doesn't have great low light capabilities. So <laughs> if you want to take pictures in low light, they come out like gray postcards. Hold on, my dad's calling. You guys want you guys want to talk to my dad? Hey, dad. We're at the house. We're uh, we're filming a YouTube video right now. Say hi to, to ha say hi to the YouTubers. They can't see though. Oh wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I, I gotta I gotta switch it this way. <laughs> hey guys, everyone, say hi to my dad. Dad, say hi to everyone. <laughs> they, no, they can't <laughs> see. They can't see you or hear you right now. But when I edit the video, then they'll be able to. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got him! Got him! <laughs> he disappeared so fast. <laughs> okay, so back to the, the film review or whatever. So yeah, the ones that turned out all grainy and green, kind of like these, were due to low light. The Fujifilm disposable camera is not a low light camera. It's not the Sony A7S Mark II with, you know, 28,000 million ISO. No, this thing was at like like 40 <laughs> all right anyways went into the little the little supermarket store got ourselves the fuji film disposable camera you know shot one roll took it back got developed pretty much the same day um and then we went to tokyo so this all was in hokkaido sapporo then we went to tokyo and went to this film store and i was like oh i want to buy another one but then I saw an actual like you know selection of film cameras, and so I was like, oh, this is cool, this is cool. So I went and bought. I'll be right back. This bad boy right here. This, this guy. We got it in Tokyo, uh, Hokkaido, Sapporo. We got it in Japan. All right, it's a Japanese camera, but uh. Yeah, so this is the bad boy right here. Nice and beautiful. This is the Sony A7S Mark II. Okay? But, you know, you know me. You can't you can't stay simple forever, you know? <laughs> it's nice to be a little simple man, but sometimes you just got to stunt on them, you know? So then that's when we picked up Ta -da! this bad boy. Hold on, let's get some light on this bad boy. Yeah, right there. Oh, ah, work it, work it, work it, work it, work it. Ooh. Oh, you can even see your pictures through that screen. You can see which pictures you took. Just kidding. You can't see your pictures. <laughs> but yeah, has a nice little top, top display. And ready, ready for it. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's me in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Um, just kidding, guys. Just kidding. So this is the camera, and uh, this thing is so dope. So one, here's some cool features about it. It has, okay. So it has this little switch right here that goes from, uh, looks like normal picture to this P, which you know, you would think P is portrait, but nah, P is panorama, baby. Huh? Panorama mode. And panorama mode doesn't really make it any wide or anything, but it gives you those 16 by 9 bars, you know? Yeah. And so it makes your photos come out like this, which is actually pretty cool if you're going for like maybe like film stills or trying to make it look like it's, uh, you know, making it look like it's a letterbox film. Or what you can also do is once you print them, cut it, cut it to where, um, Cut it to where the bars are, and then, yeah, you'll have it like that. But yeah, so again, this is the Pentax SBO 140. ISO depends on what film you put in there. Um, it has a nice little 
top LCD display that tells you how many counts you have left. It also tells you whether or not your flash is enabled. You could do flash. Hold on, maybe I should do it this way so you guys could read it. Oh, is that? Which way can you guys read it? So yeah, it has no flash, flash, night mode, um, which is what I shot on a lot actually when I uh, know my film isn't that strong. If I'm like running 100 or something, then I'll shoot in night mode if it's a uh, kind of a low light situation. And this is one of the coolest things that, this is one of the coolest things that I didn't find out till like a few weeks after using this camera is that on the strap, here's this little bad boy on the strap, right? I thought it was just part of the strap. I thought it was just the logo. It says Pentax, you know, I thought it was just the logo, but no, this bad boy, you slide them out and it's a freaking wireless remote for the camera. So you can wirelessly take a picture. You can literally go, it has three zoom modes. So look, oh, hold on, I have to hit wireless. Okay, so it's three zoom modes. So that's number three. Oh. This is number two. It's a long, medium, and short. So you can zoom out however long you want. And then just, psh, psh, and you can take the picture. That's amazing. And it literally lives right here on the strap if you want, which is awesome because you're never going to lose it. So I don't know why they don't make more of these in the world. I, I honestly, I love this camera. It's a nice little point and shoot. Uh, but even though it's a point and shoot, it still feels like you have a lot of control on the photo and you can focus on composition and taking a good photo. And so I think it's perfect for street photography because you don't really have to focus on too much and you can just worry about telling the story. So we're gonna put this bad boy away. So yep, this is my baby. This is her baby. My baby. Her baby. If they would fight, my baby would win. Okay, yeah. so now we're gonna show you guys a few photos from the SBO from the Pentax. We made a little photo book slash design of some of the shots we shot um, with the SBO day two, um, and bought this nice little book because I, I want to. I've been wanting to make a design, and so. Sadly, we couldn't get the digital files of the film we shot. We only got the actual prints. And so we decided to just make the design straight with the actual prints. And there's nothing really too special about it. It's just the way we kind of organized and put it together. That that's what I really like about it. So I'm going to pretty much go through it shot by shot and explain some to you. So here it is. First page. It's our mug shot, you know. Looking good, looking pretty. Page two, us skating around the airport, which I really like how these photos turned out, honestly. They're just some really nice quality aesthetic photos. And then also there's kind of like themes that run through each like spread. So three, if you see, these are kind of going with the blue theme in the airport. All the photos kind of turned out a little bit bluer. This one on the actual airplane. This one, Sally being Sally. Or Jacque being Jacque. Oh, this one was cool. It's the sushi train boat thing, like come and bring us sushi. And then this one. This one was actually super funny. Sorry, this is one of my favorite photos. One, look at the lady or person in the right just fucking coming in and just being like, yep, coming in the middle of your picture. Here I come, coming through. Hey, what's up? Take it a picture, I know. And so pretty much uh, we were in Akihabara or whatever, like Harajuku district in Tokyo. And we were coming from the sushi place. And then I saw some homies skate and I was like, yo, you guys skate? And they were like, yeah, yeah, we skate, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, bro, like, can I try to check on your board? And he was like, sure, sure. So then I busted out like a little tray float. They threw it on Instagram, they were filming, they were all hyped and then I was like, can I take a photo of you guys? And they were like, sure, sure, sure. So they all squatted up for like a photo. And as I'm about to take this photo, just this lady walks through like, wow, like it was the funniest shit ever. Um, but I love it because it's just like the moment, like everyone's hyped. And then she's just kind of like, yep, I'm coming through, you know? So I think that made the photo even better. Oh, and then I met one of my homies, Zach. 
who just finished his contract or whatever in Japan. He was in the Navy, so that's really cool. And then a nice photo of Shibuya Crossing, and you can actually see Zach and his red ass sweater just shining out. So that's cool. Oh, these are some of my favorite photos. My probably one, two of my favorite photos. So this one, I love it because I was just randomly snapping and I wasn't really like looking at anything. It was just kind of a random snap. And it looks like they're almost like twins, like two twins that are walking by wearing like the exact same outfit like together, which is cool. And then this one is just the expression, come on, when are you going to capture like someone being so happy ever like that in their life? You know, that's just genuine happiness. And so these two are like probably, this is my favorite spread for sure. But yeah, and then next is when it started snowing when we went back to Hokkaido to uh, We went back to Hokkaido and this is where we got the photos developed and so it started snowing and We were so excited. And I was like come on. We gotta take photos in the snow. Let's do it. And then finally This last one waiting for the plane just Jack Hui, just sitting up there looking all cute Probably been all cute, and yeah, that's the end. So that's pretty much uh, our Japan photo book. Definitely want to go back and shoot more photos. I'm um, definitely going to try to shoot some street photos um, in Thailand when we go. And yeah, just overall, my first experience shooting film, freaking amazing. Literally went from this bad boy to this bad boy, and now thanks to Willem. I'm over here looking at like RZ 6.7s and shit. I'm just like, I want to throw myself into that challenge and shooting, you know, medium format. And uh, just kind of keep exploring the different mediums and see what I really stick to. Uh, I also have like some Polaroids here that I shot when I got my One Step 2 Plus. So this is honestly probably my favorite photo I've ever shot. Just kidding. That's the... <laughs> If you guys have a Polaroid, you know what that is. It, it comes, it's when like right before you expose your pictures, it's the one that slides out before like the safety photo. So this definitely my favorite photo I've shot on Polaroid so far. This is of a homegirl at the skate park doing a backflip, like a reverse backflip on freaking roller skates. It's insane. And I shot this with like the remote trigger and it was so hard because it kept not going off when I tried shooting. And um, and so I had made her do it like five times. And I'm like, God, I'm risking her life for this photo. But yeah, I love digital, but I can't wait to get these developed. That's the only thing that I am painstakingly like upset about is the fact that it's so hard to get films, uh, film developed here just because... You either have to send it online, and I hate sending things online, especially if it's something like film. I hate sending things online um, back to people and then waiting for it, waiting for it to get back. Um, I'd rather just walk into the place in person, same day, give them it, get it done in you know however long it takes, and then same day, you know, um, or even like drop it off and come back a few days later. But the thing is, this place is so far; it's like all the way across town, and you know been a while but thanks again guys for watching this is probably like a 50,000 minute video that I have to edit down to like a five minute video but yeah so guys I tell you we're currently trapped in China right now it's coronavirus season not season but you guys know what's happening and we're literally can't leave our apartment they're like one person can leave every day not to go every to day. Every, day. every two days one person can leave to go to the grocery store and I'm like, what if we need like three bottles, three stacks of water? She can't carry that by herself. I can't carry that and drive my bike by myself. So like, we both need to leave. And they're like, nah, not happening. And I'm like, dang it. And I want to go skate. I can't go skate. She won't let me. She's like, you're going to die out there. I'm like, there's no one outside. All the spots are open. They're free. Anyways. We're trying not to die, but we're gonna escape to Thailand soon. And yeah, um, oh yeah, I was saying, because I was so bored and on Chinese New Year's, I played Mahjong for the first time. 
I bought a mahjong table for like 1800 bucks, and yeah, it's fun. But the thing is, you need four people to play, and there's only two of us stuck in this house. So if you guys want to come over and play mahjong with us, we would really appreciate it. All right, love you guys. Bye. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Zai Jian. Zai Jian. How do you turn this thing off? Mom?